Hey guys, Angel here. And today I wanted to go through something that I had on my mind in terms of an idea, something I, of a project I wanted to work on kind of in my spare time, just trying to improve some of my development skills, but also try out some new technologies. So I'm going to be creating a series using, or rather creating a blog using the Astro framework, just as I listed here. And we'll talk a little bit more about what the Astro framework is and why I chose it. But first, let's get into what we're going to be learning today. So Astro framework, what does that even mean? It's a pretty much an all-in-one web development framework. And if we go to astro.build right here, this website, their homepage, it's going to tell you a little bit more about what it is and how it's mainly designed for speed, being able to pull content. And we're going to set this up today. There are some key benefits to why we would want to use it. But just so we get an outline of kind of what this first part of the video is going to entail, we're going to be able to set up our dev environment. So whether we use an, an online code space or if we use something on our local machine like VS Code to actually code and edit the files for our website, we're going to walk through how to create some pages and blog posts for the website. Specifically, we're going to use one of Astro's templates as I feel that's the route most new users will take. We're going to dabble a little bit with building different Astro components. We're going to learn a little bit how to work with local files on our machine. So how to edit and change HTML files or content content on a specific page, our homepage maybe, and then actually commit, upload, and save those changes from our local machine so that we can then see it on our live site. We're going to then add or edit and play around with some additional interactivity features on the site. So whether that's button or links, things like that, we're going to talk a little bit how to do that. And of course, Wrapping that all up, we're going to de deploy the actual site to the web, specifically using Netlify. And the great thing about all this too is it's all can be done for free. So this all can be done for free. <clears throat> we don't have to pay for any hosting or WordPress, you know, monthly subscriptions or anything like that. We could do this setup for free. I mean, if you really want to, you can purchase a domain name to mitigate the kind of subdomain we're going to have in place when we use Netlify, but we'll get to that when that comes. So yeah, this can all be done for free. And kind of the next part of the video, just kind of giving a, a preview here, we're going to talk about once the blog is created and deployed, we're going to actually talk more about creating content and how to generate content for those specific pages, whether it's your homepage of your blog, your about us page, generating ideas and different topics, building out your category structure and your subcategory structure, all those types of things we'll be discussing kind of in the next portion or next segment of this tutorial of this video series, I should say. Cool. So let's just dive right in. So if we want to go to astro.build, that's going to be the website we're going to want to jump to. And right off the bat here, you can see just the homepage, build what you want, build the web you want, the all in one for a framework designed for speed. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to actually hit get started. And this is going to bring us to the docs page of Astro. So docs.astro.build and the getting started page. This talks a little bit about the some of the key features and starting your first project, learning about more about Astro, the community, things like that. But what you need to really know is jumping here, why are we going to use Astro? Just so you guys have some additional context. So in terms for of how Astro's positioning it, the five design principles that kind of helped us explain why we would want to build with Astro and some of the exit problems that it's trying to solve is that it's very highly content focused for content rich websites. So a blog will be perfect. It's faster when they render HTML because they're doing everything on server side. So it's fast by default and it's easy to use and you don't need to be the expert. And this tutorial should showcase some of that, that you don't need to be an expert to build something with Astro. It's fully featured, but also flexible. So what that means, if we jump down to fully featured is that it actually also includes component syntax, asset handling, build processing, things like that. But you can also use your own UI framework and you don't have to know what this means right now, but this is just other libraries, other frameworks, I should say, other front end user interface frameworks like React, Preact, Solid, Svelte, Vue, Lit. They're all, they're all supported additionally into Astro. So you can integrate these different frameworks if you, you know, have more experience in those. So we might touch a little bit on that throughout the tutorial. But what I found really interesting when looking through the docs compared to some of the other frameworks that I've used or played with in the past, and it may be something I've oversighted or missed, but they have this section here, here called tutorials and actually saying build the blog. So I clicked on it just out of curiosity. And this kind of piqued my interest not to only make a video, but 
following how well this tutorial of building your blog with Astro might be and just kind of give out my own feedback and kind of walk through the process. So I thought this would be pretty interesting the way they incorporate, you know, a tutorial tracker or a checklist because the biggest, one of the, the main things here is that Astro is easy to build without being an expert. And they're kind of backing that up here by having this little tutorial for new users. And I just want to see how well it's put together for, especially for, for non, you know, web developer experts or anyone who doesn't have really too much experience in HTML or CSS or JavaScript. So that's what we're going to do here today from scratch. So building your first Astro blog. And if you want, this is the URL you can jump into. I can also provide it in the, the video description here, but it's docs.astro.build slash, and then you have the path location there. So we'll, we'll, we'll share that in the description. All right. So this video might be pretty long in terms of just the, the size and the amount of content I want to put in. I didn't want to split this up into multiple parts. I just feel like if you want to watch everything, you'll come back later, continue the process. You have to jump to six different videos. So in this tutorial, you will learn Astro's key features by building a fully functional blog from zero to a full launch. Great. Along the way, you'll set up your de development environment, create pages, blog posts, build Astro components. Great. Deploy your site to the web. Pretty straightforward in terms of what we'll do. So that's great. If we want to preview what you're going to build, you can view the final project on GitHub or StackBlitz. So let's actually go to StackBlitz and see my, possibly what a final product would look like. So what StackBlitz is, is just an online code editor, and it's actually booting an actual container that this demo is hosted in. It's installing the different dependencies, and then it's going to run a starting command to just show us kind of what the end result will look like. So this is just one example of a pretty basic homepage, right? An about us page, a blog, I'm just clicking through. It's interactive. So this is just some pre-built data here. It's a pre-built site, just us being hosting it on the web and us being able to see it in action. So this is one variation of it. So if we go back, we'll go back to our build and you can also view the final project on GitHub if you'd like. So if we come down here, you can open in stack blitz again. I don't know if it's the same template. I know they have multiple templates the last time I looked. So I'm curious to see if this has a, a different view. But yeah, you can actually edit this if you really wanted to. But we'll come back to that in a second. Let's see what we got here. It might be the same one. Yeah, so it's the same template. I know they have multiple templates. Just want to see if they previewed a different template there for us. So let's go back to our build, build a blog page. And it has this nice checklist. So, oh, right here, it says it right here. So if you rather start exploring Astro, with pre-built Astro sites, you can visit astro.new and choose a starter template and open in an online editor. But you can also do this on a local editor such as VS Code. So here are just some of the quick templates they have here. So if we wanted to open this in Code Sandbox, this is another online code editor. They're just, there's multiple systems like this on multiple platforms. So this is just one view. This is ex what, a, what a potential website could look like, a doc documentation website, documentation, that's pretty cool how it looks, integrations page, just leads to the, the URLs. I looked at this one, just a basic blog structure, very minimal design, but it gets us going, gets us started. We're going to be leveraging this template. So we have a homepage, a blog, a list of our page, our blog articles or our blog posts rather, about us page and some external links, Twitter to your GitHub, whatever you want. You know, we can customize this, customize this fully. And we're going to follow just this format so you guys can get started and get some of these these pages built out. So I'm going to go back and you could look through all these. They have some docs templates, more portfolio style template. So that's great that they provide those. So what we're going to do next. So it looks great. I'm ready to get started. I want to follow this kind of checklist that they have and keep it going as if I was just coming into this as a new new user, an experienced user too. So about this tutorial, what do I need to know? If you have some basic familiarity with HTML, Markdown, CSS, a little JavaScript, and you're totally good to go. You'll be able to complete the entire tutorial just by following these instructions. Great. You will also need a GitHub account for publishing your project to the web. So I would just click this link if I were you and go ahead and create a GitHub account on the side and then come back to this tutorial. I already created a GitHub account. I have one. So you can go ahead and do that, but they provide you with the link there. Go ahead, create that, and then come back to this portion of the video. Great, so it actually tells you, how do I use the checklist at the bottom of the page? You check them off, pretty straightforward. What is unit one? If it has things that I already know, can I skip it? it? Tells you if you can skip it. If you want, create a new empty Astro project and start ahead at unit two, pretty much. What if I need help or want to learn more about Astro? We have a Discord server, it's a place to go and ask questions. So we have some support here if we get stuck. This So where can I leave feedback about this tutorial? We'll probably do this at the end since we're going through this on video and give some feedback to the team here. 
So great, I'm ready to build this thing. And then we'll continue to the next step. Check-in, so unit one setup. Now that you know what you're going to build, in, case a in this case, a block, let's set up all the tools you need for this project. This unit shows you how to set up your dev environment and deploy to Netlify. Skip ahead if you're already comfortable with your environment workflow. So we're not gonna skip ahead. I'm using StackBlitz, so if you wanna complete this tutorial in an online code editor instead, you can follow these instructions. Visit astro.new, click on empty project. That's where we were at before. We can open this in a stack blitz, which is just an online code editor. In this case, I think I'm going to stick with using a VS code. It's a local editor. <clears throat> and I think they start to explain that a little bit later. And I was previewing some of this. So where are we going? In this unit, you're going to create a new project that's stored online in GitHub and connected to Netlify. So GitHub's free and their, Netlify has a free version of their service. As you write code, you will periodic periodically commit your changes to GitHub. So this means as we write our code, make edits and save it, it's gonna commit those changes and upload those changes to GitHub. Thus, Netlify will then use those files in the GitHub respiratory or the GitHub, you could say, data set to build the website or update the website and then publish it on the internet. Every time you commit a change to GitHub, a notification sent to Netlify, then Netlify up will automatically rebuild, replenish your life site. So it's kind of like how you would do this if you were doing this in the traditional like WordPress instance, you just make the change, WordPress update it, updates your, the changes, you save it, and then you see it on the website. Let's get started building an Astro project. Prepare your dev environment. So install any tools that we'll, we will use to build your Astro site. That's what we're gonna do now. So get the dev tools you need. Terminal, you will use a command line terminal to create your Astro project and run key commands. That sounds scary at first if you're not familiar, but it's really not. And we'll go through that process as well. VS Code has a terminal built into it. So we're going to use that. Node.js. For Astro to run your system, you need to have Node.js installed version 16.12 or later. So what you can do is you go to this link that they have here and you just install it on your machine. You follow the on-screen prompts and install Node.js. So you have that library. To check whether you already have the compatible version installed, you can run Node-V and we'll do that later just as an example to make sure we're up to date. If the command returns a version higher than 16.12, you're good to go. So we have to be above 16, version 16.12 with node.js. If the command line returns an error or a number lower, then we need to install the updated version. Great. So the code editor, this is what I was talking about before. You're going to need to download a code editor to write your code. So the tutorial will use VS Code, but you can use any editor for your operating system. Here you're going to click this link to download and install VS Code or another code editor of your choice. Great, so go ahead and do that. Download and install VS Code like you would install any other program on your machine, and then we'll continue with the rest of the build. They give you a little quick quiz, so test your knowledge. A code editor for make changes, a code editor for making changes to your files and your content. VS Code. So I kind of read that out of context. Um, an online version control provider for your repository. GitHub. An application running for running commands. Terminal. So this is just they're just quizzing you. You don't have to do it. Checklist for moving on. So I can access the command line. I have Node.js installed. I have a code like VS Code. So let's, before we do that, I'm going to open up VS Code since I have it installed. VS, here we go. VS Code. Great. So this is a blog I was working on before. If we do, I'll do a file new window here. to get started and see what I have. So I'm updated on my plugin. So this is what you'll be presented when you're first opening Visual Studio. And we have over here our Explorer window, which you should open up just for the moment now. You might keep it open as we continue to work through this, but just to follow along. And so what are the few things we have to check? I can access the command line in a terminal. So the command line within Visual Studio Code, if you press Control J or Command J, I believe on a Mac, you can see it opens and closes that, that bottom section, which has our terminal window here. So we can access that. We have our access to our command terminal. I have Node.js in installed. So we have to run a command to make sure we do have it. So dash V, as I said before, node dash V. And I have 18.12.1 installed, so we're good to go. I have a code editor like VS Code. Yes, we're going to continue. Create your first Astro project. Run the create Astro setup wizard to create a new Astro project. Launch the Astro setup wizard. The preferred way to create a new Astro site is to go through create Astro setup wizard. And this is just a command you would input in the terminal. So like it says, in the command line of your terminal, run the following commands using your preferred package manager. So I use NPM, so we have our, we have our node installed, and I'm going to do NPM create Astro at latest. So what that does is just going to install the latest version of Astro and get the, and initiate that wizard 
and we're going to be presented with a few prompts. Confirm, we'll press confirm to install Astro. So we're going to just press Y when that comes up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this out or pin this, I should say, to the side of my screen here. You can follow along. And then I'll pin this other window here and we'll have a side by side view. Hopefully it's not too confusing. But now we have our terminal. We entered node.v to see our node version. So now it wants us to do npm create astro percent let me add symbol you gotta spell astro properly latest hit enter and away that should go you need to install the following packages create astro it says you want to hit y for yes the prompt asks where would you like to create your new project that's going to be next so when the prompt asks where you would like to create your new project as it is doing so here type in the name of the folder to create a new directory for your project for example dot slash tutorial in this case, we're going to put dot slash, where are we going to do, I guess, test blog. Let's just do that. Or we can do astro blog. So we understand what it is. Astro blog, and we'll hit enter. What else do they tell us? A new astro project can only be created in a completely empty folder. Great. So choose a name for your folder that does not already exist. Makes sense. You will see a short list of starter templates to choose from. Use the arrow keys up down to navigate to the empty template and then press return to submit your choice. So in this case, I'm not going to hit empty because I feel in most cases, some of you are going to want to use a template and just make edits to it. It may be the contrary where it's like, you know, maybe you want to start fresh and completely build it from scratch, but I feel it'll be a little bit easier. So I'm going to go this route to use the blog template, which to me makes what would make sense in this case. And that's the template we viewed before that we were previewing before we started this tutorial. So I'm going to hit enter and use the blog template. So what it's doing now is just installing the dependencies is asking me to install them you can see you can use your arrow keys to highlight over yes or no in this case you want to do yes hit enter as that's the no step number five as we just did would you like to install dependencies type y for yes or highlight over yes when the prompt asks you if you ask you if you plan on writing typescript type no so we're going to hit end for when it asks us about writing typescript Right now it's downloading all the dependencies that it needs for this blog template. So this, in this case is generating all those files. Do you plan to write on TypeScript? I'm gonna say no, just like the tutorial says. Initialize a new Git repo. And they say we want to do yes. Lift off confirm, explore your project, run the new project directory using CD Astro blog, run npm run dev to start a new dev server. Yep. So when a wizard is complete, you no longer need this terminal. You can open VS code to continue. All right. So what we can do is first, we want to type in this first line, like it says, so enter your project directory using cd, cd dot slash astro blogs. And that's going to open up our directory where we actually created, created this at and ha have to give us access to all our files that were just downloaded. So dot astro blog. Great. So you can see we're now in the astro blog. Then we can run npm run dev to start the dev server. So we'll do that in just a second. So now open your project code in VS code, open VS code. You will be prompted to open a folder. So that's where I was looking at this Explorer window before. So it prompts you to open a folder. So let's backtrack and we'll just clear this out for now. I can type it clear and I'm going to close the window for now. So choose the folder you created during setup, during the setup wizard. So I'm going to go to open folder. Let's see, do I have it here? Astro blog. There it is. Select folder. And there we go. Now we're in our astro folder, astro blog folder project. It's your first time opening, you should see a notification asking to install recommended extensions. Click this to see recommended extensions and choose the Astro language support. So what that means is that I already have this installed, but initially what it's going to say is, or it might recommend it, VS Code actually might recommend it. If it doesn't and you don't hit install it, you can come over this extensions window here where you type in Astro. All right, I'll expand this a little bit. Astro and this first one here is just language support for Astro. You're going to click on that and hit install. And it's just an extension for VS Code right, to be able to understand the syntax and give you some more semantic highlighting. So what that means is it just understands the Astro language. It gives you more support in VS Code natively or not natively, but in addition to the others that it understands. So go ahead and do that. And then we'll jump back to our Explorer and then we'll go back to our, our build here, our tutorial. So make sure the terminal is visible and that you can see the command prompt such as this user machine slash Taurus. In our case, we have to do command J. We have our terminal open, which is great. And also tells you the keyboard shortcut here. There you go to see the terminal within VS Code. So you can now use the terminal built into this window. So your computer's terminal app for the rest of the tutorial. I just used the terminal app from the beginning within VS Code. 
All right, run Astro in dev mode. So in order to preview your project's files as a website while you're working, you'll need to, you need Astro to be running in development mode or dev mode. So how do we start that? Start the dev server, run the command to start the Astro dev server by typing into VS Code's terminal, npm run dev. So as it says here, npm run dev, enter. There we go. We should see confirmation in the terminal that Astro is running in dev mode. And we are, yep, local host network use, yeah, dev, Astro dev. So if we want to now view a preview of your website, your project file contains all the code necessary to display an Astro website, but the browser is responsible for displaying your code as web pages. So it says, click on local host link in your terminal window to see a live preview of your new Astro website. What's that? That's this right here. So the local host. So you're going to want to do a control, hold down control and then click, left click on your mouse. And there we go. We're previewing what we just downloaded or the, the project that we just set up with all the dependencies, all the different files, and it's now displaying them as web pages. So we have our personal website. This is just a template that we utilized earlier. Let me see if I can make it bigger on this side. There we go. And yeah, it's giving us a preview of that. So let's go back to our guide here. Astro uses the localhost 3000 by default. Yes, that's what it says there. Here's what the empty project would look like if we just started with the empty project. We started with the template, so that's why we have all this built out formatting already for us with an actual blog page using that filler content and about us page using just some lorem ipsum content here. So we'll, we can change that later, but we can actually navigate and see the changes locally. Great. So some things to know, as it says, using the Astro Dev server. When the Astro server is running in dev mode, you will not be able to run commands in your terminal window. Instead, this pane will give you feedback as you preview your site. You can stop the dev server anytime to return to the command prompt by typing control C in the terminal. Sometimes the dev server will stop on its own while you're working. If your live preview stops working, go back to the terminal and restart the dev server by typing npm run dev. Pretty simple. So in this case, we can't make changes to our site or use the terminal as we are running in dev mode. That's fine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump back into our terminal. I'm going to hit control C, terminate job. Yes. So now this site's not going to, it's not going to show us a preview anymore. And now we can make changes to our blog in the terminal, or we can make changes in the terminal and still see our blog. Great. So I create a new Astro project. Check. I can start the Astro dev server. Check. We did that. Write your first line of Astro. That's the next step here. So make your first edit to your new website. That's what we're going to be doing. Edit your homepage. So how do we edit our homepage now? I'm going to come down to our terminal. I'm going to type in clear just to clear out all this information here. I can start fresh. In your code editor, navigate in the explore file pane to source page index.astro. So that's just the, the direct, right? So we come over here. Here's our source folder. We go down here to pages, and then we have index.astro right there. So it's talking about this page here, and that's actually our homepage. And it gives us a preview of what it should look like. This is the very basic one that was empty. Ours is going to look a little bit more fleshed out and I have this in a split window. So it looks kind of crunched here, but you can see ours has the text we were seeing before our H1, hello astronaut, welcome to the official Astro site, so on and so forth in terms of the content. So this is where we go ahead and edit that number two. So it's talking about editing the content on your page in the body. So yes, everything here in the body tag. So you can see we have a body tag here opening, and then we have a body tag all the way down here. So everything in between that is in the body of the page, right? Everything in between, we'll highlight everything in between is in the body of the page. We can make edits here without breaking anything initially. So what it says, type in the editor, change the heading text on your page and save the changes. So that's what it wants us to do to get some practice there. So our heading is going to be right here. So our heading is our H1 tag. That's our heading. And what we can do, we say, hello, astronaut. And you can say, welcome to my first Astro blog emoji. You can put the world if you want to. All right, great. So we made our first change. Before it was this, right? We can still see a preview of what it was before since I didn't refresh the page. So now it says, once you make that change, check the browser preview. You should see your page content updated to the new text. So what I like to do is every time you see a little white dot right next to the actual file that you're in, it means that there was a change made. And we just need to save the change. So I'll just put control S, save my change. And now I'm going to run that command again. So what we can do is type in our, down here in our terminal, npm run dev, I believe it was. There we go. So it's running our dev environment, content types generated. And if we control, actually we go back to that 
page we opened up, if we refresh it, there you go. You can see we have edited and updated our H1 tag or our heading tag for the homepage of our blog. Now, all of this still sits locally on our machine. So that means that everything is just stored on our computers right now, whether it's a laptop or a desktop. So now we're going to check the browser preview. We did that. Great. Congratulations. You are now an Astro developer. Wow. The rest of the unit will set you up for success with version control and a published website you could show off. So what that means is that version control is where, we, where GitHub comes into place and we're allowed to, we're enabled to use that as every time we make or commit changes or save changes to our site, you know, it uploads a new version of our site and controls that for us essentially. So that's what version control is just kind of in layman terms there. And then of course that then is gonna be able to allow us to connect to a published web website so we can actually share the URL with others and it's not just all sitting on our local machine or our computer, you know, our hard drive, our solid state drives. So now we can hit, I make changes to my browser. And of course I am an actual developer now. I can put that on my LinkedIn resume. Store your repository online. This is what we're up doing next. So put your project respiratory online, repository online. This tutorial will use GitHub to store our repository and connect to a web host. You're welcome to use the online Git provider of your choice. So there's multiple ones. We're going to use GitHub. That's what you created a account for earlier on. So note, if you're already familiar with Git and have your own workflow, then create a new GitHub repository for your project using the preferred method. We're not going to do that. We're going to start from scratch. So creating a repository on GitHub. Although there are a few ways, are a few ways to get your local code stored into GitHub, this tutorial will guide you through a method that does not require using Git in the command line. Pretty user-friendly way. So log into github.com in a browser and click the plus in the upper right hand screen to make a repository. So we're going to do that first. So let's go ahead and go to github.com homepage. Am I logged in? Sign in, plus sign at the top, new repository. Great. What's the next step? Choose a name for your repository. This does not have to be the same name as your project folder. Now we could do it. Repository name. So I would do astro blog test. Astro blog test. That's it. Choose a name. You will be presented with options, but you do not need to change any of these, any of the defaults. So scroll down and click the button to create a repository. So what that means is that if we go back to GitHub, just create the name, scroll down, and just click create. You don't have to change any settings right now. <clears throat> Great. So now we created our repository within GitHub. So I'm going to go back. You will be presented with various setup steps, but you won't need to use any of them. Make note of the URL of your repository. This is important. You can now exit this page without doing anything. So we go back to our GitHub. The URL of the repository is right here, right at the top. So you can highlight it, copy it, or you can just hit the copy button here, or it makes you feel better. And this will hold on to that. So now, how do we commit our local code to GitHub? So this is saying, how do we transfer or commit any changes, process any changes from our VS Code window, or our code editor, our VS Code file that we're working on in our folder, and commit it and push it to GitHub? So it says, in the last section, you made a change to your page's content. This means that your project files have changed, and VS Code shows uh, should show a number on the top of the source icon menu icon. This source tab is where you regularly go up to update your files on GitHub. So what that means is this right here, this source control, see how it has that one there? Because that we made one change, which was our H1 tag. So that's what it's talking about. So it wants us to click the three dots menu above the commit message and choose remote and then add remote. So we're going to click our source section, source window here. And then it says within our source window, let me expand this because it'll probably look more like this for you guys. And then hit the three dots up top, come down to remote and hit add remote. And it says, if necessary, follow any authentication steps, then return to VS Code or repeat. So this means if you need to integrate GitHub. So let's see, I want to add remote from GitHub. So it already, since I have the integration already set up, it already shows you all, shows all my respiratories or repositories. So I'm going to click that remote name, your, your local name, you can select any name you'd like. So I'm going to just call this Astro Blog remote and then press enter. If you like visual code to periodically run git fetch, let's see, what does it say? I'll just say yes. So it'll periodically run a fetch to make sure any no, any changes have been met or changes have been done automatically, essentially. Great. So we did that. You should now see a list of all your pods. Okay, we did that at the menu. Great. So we're on step five. At the top of the menu pane, there will be a place to enter a commit message which is just a description of your file changes. So that's this box right here. And, and this one's going to be our, just our first change. So they want us to type in initial commit. This is kind of just like annotating every time you commit a change and what you did. You know, it could have been an H1 or been like about us page revamp or removal, 
something like that, just kind of notating or commenting on what the commit commitment of these changes are. So type in initial commit and then press commit. It's going to say, it wants us to say when this message comes up, hit always and continue. Lastly, the list of changes file should be replaced with a publish button, which we do see here. Click this to send your committed changes to GitHub. Publish branch. All right. See your project on GitHub. To verify that your project is successfully stored on GitHub, go to GitHub, look under your account for the list of repositories, choose the new one you created, and verify that it contains your Astro project files. So I'm going to go back to that window. So this is what it looked like. So this is what it looked like when we just created the repository. So now let's refresh this and see what we got. See it changed. It has all our initial com commitments here. We have all our files here, our read.me that I wish we can delete, but see this all wasn't here before and this is what we added. So we know those changed. So this is just a lot of documentation that they added to the repository that we downloaded from just to have some support. Great, so I have stored my project on GitHub. I can check that off and move on to the next section. All right, so now we're gonna create and deploy your first site on Astro. Actually, in this case, all right, so now we're going to deploy your site to Astro. All right, so now we're going to deploy the site to the web. So what does that entail? It says we're going to add the GitHub repository as a new Netlify app, and we're going to deploy your Astro site to the web. Those are the two things we're going to learn here. So here we're going to connect GitHub repo or repository to Netlify. Netlify is going to use that project to build and deploy your site live on the web every time you commit a change to your code. In this tutorial, we're going to use Netlify, but you can use any hosting service for deploying your site to the internet. I think Netlify is a good option here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So first you're gonna to wanna to create a Netlify site. So create a free account at Netlify if you do not already have one. All right, so I have one. So I'm gonna to go to netlify.com. I'm gonna log in. I'm gonna log in using GitHub. I found it easier to do that because it actually just then initializes and syncs with all your repositories when you're going through this process. So what does it want us to do? Make a note of your username. We know our username, you have your dashboard and your site to create. Cool. Click add new site, import existing project. So I'm gonna go here to sites, add new site, import from an existing project. Connect to Git provider. I'm gonna use GitHub, which has been authorized already. And you can see if you come down here, you go back and see it's not, a, can you see we can configure the Netlify app on GitHub. Configure, only selected. Okay, so if you don't see it, you have to go and configure it and select your repos here. So I'm going to allow it to say all for next time. Save. So that way I have access to all of them. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and choose the Astro blog repo. Owner, Zimmy Writers. That's just the owner name I have in my in my, my Netlify account, but you can change it to however you want. And we're going to hit deploy site. So everything else is, if you don't have an owner for the first time, it's going to tell you to create an owner name or a team name. And you go ahead and do that. I think it might've mentioned that, let's see. So you were asked to connect Git, authenticate it, then choose your Astro project, which we did. The final step, Netlify will show your app's site settings. The default should be correct for the Astro's project. So you should grow down and click deploy site. So number three is referring to this screen here. And then we're gonna hit deploy site. You don't have to touch anything else. Great, so now we go to this screen. It says site deploy in progress. Congratulations, you have an Astro website. So some key things to note. Change your project name. So once your site's overview page in Netlify, on your, on your site's overview page in Netlify, you'll see your randomly generated project name and your website URL of the form like this. You can change your project name to something more memorable and this will automatically update your URL. So what that means, if you go back to Netlify, it's talking about this. It just names our project beautiful, semi-fredo, and then random characters. So what we can do is go to site settings, come to here to site name or change site name, and we can just do Astro blog test All right. or whatever your blog name is, you can put that and it's safe already taken. That makes sense. So I'll do maybe this astral blog test, change name, whoops, test. There we go. So now you can see if we go back to our site overview, this astral blog test, our URL here is astral blog dash test dot netlify dot app. So we actually can visit that URL and view your project. So that's what it says to do next. Visit your new website. Click on the URL in your settings or type into the browser to view your new website. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And there we go. It's our app. It's our application, but it's our web site. It's our website and we can see it now and live on the web. It's not just on our local machine. We can send this URL to other people and they can access this, our blog essentially. So you can actually set up a custom domain. If you purchase a domain, you own a domain already. So you can actually change this URL to something you know of your blog name. So, right, that's going to make more sense. And that's literally the only portion you would have to pay for, I guess, in this section. But you can see we 
already created a blog template. We used Astro, the, fr the framework, to be able to have some more control over our website and have you know, astronomical speed in terms of how we can navigate the site and how it's built. We still have a lot of capabilities in terms of integration of features for using this Astro framework, which we can dive into a little bit more as we start to build out more of the content of the site and the, the structure of how we want to display our homepage, our blog, our About Us, so on and so forth. But right now, we have our website pretty much created and hosted on the web, on the web. So what is it asking us to do next? Test your knowledge. You want to update your homepage or existing website. What steps do you take? You open up terminal, run create Astro, and then visit my Netlify URL. If you want to update the homepage or existing page, no, you're going to make an edit in index.astro and then commit and push changes to GitHub. Great. Checklist. I can view my updated website online. I'm ready to get back to coding. So at this point, if I open this full window, we are at unit two. So this is where we start developing and creating more pages. This is where we're going to see more of this, the intricacies are just working into the actual web files itself. So it actually tells us where are we now at this point. Check your code against this example. You don't have to do that because we started from a template. So in this, we're going to, in this section, you're going to create your first actual page. Again, this is where it, it, it kind of, I guess, conflicts with what we already started to do because we already built using a template and that gave us a lot of this already formatted for us. So creating your first page, right? Adding a bark blog post. We can still walk through these and, and I can showcase and show you where they live as opposed to creating them from scratch. But this is a great walkthrough to show you. So I'm ready to create some new pages. I'm going to hit next. So what it's showing you here is now that you have Astro files, these are going to be responsible for the pages on your website. So you can create one, create two new pages on your website about and blog. We have those add navigation links to your page. We have those. I can show you where we can update them. And this tutorial is going to show us where you can update them. So creating a new Astro file, we have our index.astro. I'll put this back on the side. So if we come back to our Explorer here, it's talking about creating this, in, this index.astro from scratch, but we already have it in our source, pages, index.astro. That's what it's telling us to do here. Add the about to the end of your website preview in the address bar and check that you can see the page loaded. So in the same folder, create a new file. I was talking about the about. So we have that about Astro created already for us. That's just the about us page. And something we could do here is if we go to the about us page, about.astro. Remember, we saw all that lorem ipsum content here, which we're not going to need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this, pretty much everything into the first paragraph. And then I'm going to take everything else. Okay. So within our paragraph tags, that's what this P is. It's our paragraph tag. So it associates the text that we have here as a paragraph. So I'm going to put just as a placeholder so we can see the change. If I was making a change to the About Us page, this is how it would go about doing so in our VS Code local editor, committing the changes and then seeing this, the changes on our website. So I'm going to stop our dev environment here. I'm going to clear. I want to put Control J just to hide our terminal. And all right, so I'm going to type in on uh, this is my About page. I will add more content here soon. Great. So I updated that. So now you can see we have our white dot. And you see there was a change that was made. I'm going to go ahead and just hit Control S. You can see now our source control updated one pending change. I'm going to go ahead and go to our source. And this is kind of the workflow you're going to go through. So then I need to put a commit message. I'm going to say updated about or removed about us content about page content placeholder content. Because that's what it was. So that's what I did. And I'm going to hit commit. I'm going to hit sync changes. I'm going to hit this actual push and pull commits to and from. I'm going to always say, okay, don't show again. So it doesn't always ask me that. Great. So now if I go to our website, which was astroblog-test.netlify.app. So that's where we're hosted now. If I go to my about us page, the about me page. We should see this change soon. So we push it to GitHub. GitHub's updating. GitHub's now notifying Netlify or Netlify's scanning Git, or your GitHub rep repository and seeing if there was any changes made or it notified it kind of communicates back and forth. And then it says, all right, there's a change. What's the change? Updates that change. And if we reload, there we go. So we got rid of the all that lip sorum or lorem ipsum text. Here's our text that we added. We can even remove our hero image if we don't want it. So I'll show you how to do that. So if we come back over into our About Us page in VS Code, you see it's here. Our hero image is this placeholder. If I go back to our Explorer, it's just calling one of the assets or one of the, the images that we have stored in our astral blog folder. So it's just saying, hey, go to this location and use this placeholder about us JPEG, right? Where does that live? It's actually, I believe in, 
components, content. Actually, I'm sorry, it's in your public folder. And that's where we have the different placeholders. So it's calling it from there and pulling it into this. So what we can do, we can either update our own and we could just add it into our public folder. So we can just upload, drag and drop a, a PNG. And then whatever that file name is, we can replace it here. And we'll do this again when we start updating the content. But just so you guys have an idea. But in this case, I'm just going to remove it. Kind of start blank slate here. I'm just going to remove it like this. And control S, initiate my save. The commit or source control detects that there was a change. Removed hero image from about page. Commit and sync. So you can see the workflow doesn't get that much or even that much longer than if you were doing this through WordPress or, you know, Squarespace or anything like any of these other web builders or page builders, site builders. It doesn't really change, but you have more control over your structure of your website, your content with the same amount of features. It's just going to be maybe a little larger learning curve, but there's going to be a lot more benefits in terms of how the framework of the site performs with the additional speed, being able to just customize any portion of this that you want without bloating it with, you know, all this JavaScript. The beauty about Astro, we'll get to this a little bit later when we start talking about more components, is that it has the option since it's all server-side rendered, meaning it's not relying on the user's computer resources to, or the or their, their browser to actually render the website. It's all done on the server side. And anything that does re 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 rely on JavaScript, it'll only be for that specific component. It won't load all this, you know, preemptive JavaScript beforehand that it needs to run specific components. If the component requires just like one component requires it, maybe it's like a, I don't know, a carousel or something that's just on one of the pages. It's only going to be for that component. Everything else is server-side rendered. So it re dramatically reduces and improves, I should say, the speed and the load times, reduces the load times for your site. And we'll see that as we start to build out the, the kind of flexibility we have here. So. Now I want to go back to my about page because we removed the image and there you go. So it updated, you know, it takes about a minute to reflect the changes made. And we went ahead and did that. So we, and we have a Twitter, which is not our Twitter. It's the Astro Twitter and the GitHub. So what I'm going to do is it actually shows you how to create the, uh, the nav here. So edit your page. We did some edits here, adding nav links. So what we're going to do is if you go to the index page again, so go to our explore index page, which is our home page. Let's see, H1, yeah. Where's our H1 here? Got it. All right, so for us, we have a different layout. In our pages, we have components as well. So what we have to do is we have, in our components, we have the Astro components, right, dot Astro. And this is where, in our header, this is where our header is. So if we go, just to understand a little bit of the styling here. So if you go back to our pages index, our homepage, you can see it, if we go back to our live view, let's go to our live view here of the homepage. We have our site title, then we have navigation, then we have the H1 tag or the heading right here and then the site title, and then our paragraph, our body. So everything after the header is in the body. So this is all on the body. And then everything above here is in the header, the way this is structured out. So you can see here, if we come back to our page, you can see we have our base head. So this is just a component or a function that was imported and created in components called base head title equals. And then we have a dynamic component here where we can just say import the site title as of because we it's defined as a constant variable which just means that we can define it somewhere else once and then we could just use this component here or this alias and just plop it in different parts of our site so like header title equals site title that's what it's going going for there but anyway you can also see that we have our h1 our site title, but we don't see the nav here, any nav component or aspect on, on the homepage itself. But when we look at our homepage on the web as a web page, we can see that our navigations here. <clears throat> so what it's doing, it's actually built into the, the header, the header function here that's being imported. So how do we go ahead and edit the header? So the header, it goes, it's in our components folder. So if we go all the way back in source, just like where our pages was, if we go up to components, that's where we have our different Astro components here. So where the navigation lives, it could not live in the header if you don't want it to. But if you go to the header.astro, you can see that we have now our header links. So we have our header link here, our homepage, blog, about the Twitter, right? Which goes to a Twitter page and a GitHub repo. And I don't need those two. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these because I don't need those. Home, blog, about is fine. And I'll go ahead and save. 
I'll go back to our source changes so, so you can see this. Usually I wouldn't just do it every single change I make, you know, make a few changes and then commit it. But I'm just trying to get you guys familiar with the process. So see updated nav links. I'll commit that sync changes. Great. So we should see that shortly. If I refresh, refresh and see how long it takes to refresh. So blog home, there you go. So it's already you know, about 40 seconds, if that. So we got rid of those three and we're already making some you know, changes to the website. And if we go back, we just have our site title just called my personal website. So where do we go to change that? So I'm gonna close some of these tabs here, go back to our Explorer and go to our header. And you can see it's also pulling in the site title here. That's where it's pulling in my personal website. So we see here that it's actually using an alias here or another constant variable that's importing the site title from. And it tells us where it lives. So it says import site title from consts. So it's pulling it from a consts, which if we go back to this right here, you can see it's pulling it from this consts.ts. So I believe this is a TypeScript file. And that's where it's pulling in that variable from that, from that specific file into that layout, that other Astro component. It might be a little confusing at first, but the more you get familiar from it, it's just, you know, referencing other files and from different locations. So you can see here, we can actually change that. So instead of my personal website, we can say, I don't know, Astro blog has been created. Rocket ship. They like to use their rocket ship. And I'll go ahead and remove the other stuff here. There we go. Site description. So site description is related to one of the description meta tags. So like, welcome to my website is what it says now, but you can say, welcome to my Astro, my awesome Astro blog. Okay, so we made changes there. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now that we just made a change here in site, in the site title, constant variable, that's what this const re represents. Anywhere that site title is referenced, it's going to update. So that's the beauty of using this layout when it comes to just web development and, and JavaScript and web development as a whole and how you arrange and set up the structure, make it easy for yourself. So anywhere where we called that site title, constant variable, like we saw on the index page, if we go back to the index page site title, site description, it updates it. We don't have to go to every single page and update that. So now if we refresh, actually, I didn't commit my changes, updated site title and description, commit and save. So let that update. Let's see what else we have. So add navigation links. We'll get to that. We have some already built. So it, it helps us get past all this process already because we already have them initiated. I just showed you where they lived already. So this is pretty good in terms of just these initial first two units. Unit zero was really nothing, but unit one was very easy and got you kind of started right off the bat. It didn't take three or four units to get the site published, which I thought was pretty great. It might take longer because of the video and just me explaining it takes a little bit longer, but now we can preview those pages. We published changes to the web. So we learned how to do that. And I'm going to keep going. I can create new pages. I can commit my changes back to GitHub, write your first markdown blog post. Okay. So we can get into this. We have already blog posts created, but now we can, we'll go ahead and edit them. So we'll follow along. Let's go back here first and refresh our website. And you can say, see it, Astrog. Oh, I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Astrog blog has been created. And if we go to see some meta description data, we can see welcome to my awesome Astro blog has been updated as well. Those are the two changes I committed. All right. So in this section, we're going to learn how to make a new folder, create a new post, write some markdown link to your blog post on your blog page. So creating your first MD file, that just means markdown file. Markdown is just a type of formatting for writing content or just structuring text, uh, very highly used amongst developers when it comes to generating content online. So very widely used, very easy to use, I would say as well. So in this case, it wants us to create a new directory. So let's get our side-by-side -side set up again here. There we go. I'll close this out just to make it a little easier on the eyes as we're going through this. We're in our project. All right, so now we're gonna to to create a new directory at source pages posts. So let's go ahead and collapse all these, start from scratch. So source pages, we have one called blog. I don't see one called posts. All right, so the way they did it is a little different. The way this is set up is that in our source, it's in a content folder. So instead of pages, we have content. And in content, we have a blog folder. And the blog folder has our different MD files, which is what it wants us to create. So if we go to our first post, the first post in the blog file, so they sorted it within source content blog. I actually like it that way because it's not necessary. I mean, they're pages, they are pages too, but
but I think this is a, a better way, or maybe, I mean, it's a good way. It's one of many ways you can do this or, for, or set up your structure, your content. So you can see here, if we open up the first post, it's just, again, some placeholder text, the lorem ipsum text, but it shows you how it's structured. So we have title, description, pub date, hero image. I believe you also can edit the last updated date besides just the published date. We have a style guide, which is useful. It's going to be useful. You can find these online. A second post, a third post, and then some support documentation there. So change the browser preview to post two. So where we can access these, if I go to the blog, you can see here. So my first post. So my first post, this is what it looks like. This is represented by this that we're seeing here. So we have the hero image at the top. We have the first post. We still get the nav here and the, the site title because we have that in our index file, our main homepage for index file. So that, that showcases it throughout the site. So our first post, second post, third post. Yep. So if we go back to our second, third post, so we have just placeholders right now. But that's essentially what it's telling you to create these. And we already have them. So if we wanted to even follow along in our blog, what we can do is we'll go ahead and new file and type in, we're going to call this, we have first, second, third, we'll do fourth post, right? Fourth post dot MD. And that converts it to know it. Now it knows it's a markdown file, hit enter and it's blank. So now look for this page in your browser preview by adding slash post dash post one. So for us, it's going to be, if we look at our structure here, so you can see this one's just third post. So we're going to update it and put fourth post, but we didn't commit the changes. So it's not going to show. We can see it in the development site if we want to. So I'm going to wait. Actually, we'll, we'll do it so we can go through the process. So control J, whoops, over here, control J, and we'll do NPM run dev. We'll open up our local host. So this is how you can make those changes before going public or publishing. So for some reason, our, our blog's broken. I'm not sure what happened here. Can I read properties? Index of. So I'm going to copy. Anyway, I'm going to copy the first post section here and just paste it into our fourth post. And I'm going to retitle this as fourth. Lorem Ipsum. We'll change our date to March 15th, 2023. And we'll keep the same placeholder holder image. Go ahead, save. It's going to reload. So I go to blog. All right. So that's why I didn't save one of the changes. I had to make sure you save. When you're doing it in a de de development environment, oh wait, I'm not in the development environment. Let me go back before I say that. Home, blog. Yeah, so we have to save. This is the dev environment. We're at localhost 3000 slash blog. We're not at our Netlify. This is, this is live, this is the dev environment. So this is all just viewing it locally before we push it. So you can see my fourth post is here now. But the reason I was getting that error is because I had a change or I had created a file, but I didn't save it. So it was trying to load something and it wasn't working. So just make sure you save. Then we want to publish it. That's when we commit because we're committing to these changes. Little learning session there for myself as well. So I'm going to close some of these tabs here. And we have our, that's our live site. This is our dev. So if we go to our fourth post, you can see we have it here. We have our fourth post, second post, second post, just the format of how the blog. And this is all based off like a template structure, a layout, I should say, a layout structure. So that's already defined for us when we do downloaded all these files. And we can change that too. So if we come back to our second, right, this is just how it looks in terms of the styling guide. But with Markdown, you can change that. So you can add a heading, H1 or H2. So if you go to the style guide, it actually shows you what that means. So like H1s, H2, adding your different heading tags or different elements. A paragraph is just a paragraph. You're just typing it out. How to, enter, how to use links, placeholder, hid, placeholder images, block quotes, things like that. So it shows you how to use all the different features, creating tables, using Markdown. It shows you how to do all that in the style guide. You can get these on Google too. So what I'm going to do here is, let's put this is test of a of the fourth blog post on my site. Thumbs up because we like thumbs ups everywhere. That's great. So save. And you can see it instantly in the dev environment. We can see that change. And we can see it automatically. It's not live yet on our live site. You can see we don't have it there yet. So cool. So we go back here. We created our first MD file. Technically, we did create it. Write a markdown content. So copy or type the following code. All right. So this, I should have jumped down here before. So this is the other tags you can use in the structure. So like I said before, we had title, pub date, right? Description. You can use another one called an author. Author. So it could be Angel, Astro, or Astro Master. Astro Master now. 
image. They're using hero image, but you can use image tag like this here with image URL and the alt tag, alt text. I um, you can add tags just like you would in WordPress if you wanted to add tags. So if you want to see what that looks like, so we get tags, let's see, we have brackets and then it's quotes and we can just say Astro comma space or do the same thing, blogging. These are actually good tags for exactly what we're doing, learning in public. Cool. So now we have those created as tags. I'm curious to see what that looks like. So then my first blog post published, what I've accomplished. This is just different syntax for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And if we go to our fourth post, you can see we have this. So we're not displaying author or things like that because I believe in our layout, our blog layout, we have blog post layout, see here, we got our layouts. We're not, it's not laid out to show that information, but we can change it. We can change that. So some of the variables here, we can update and change and add that as different properties to include in our blog posts. And that's the customization we have here. It's a little bit more manual, but I think the freedom here is what's, what's great. Um, and there's always a place to go and knowing where to change that. So we added some of that. We'll go back to our fourth blog post. That's great. Link to your post. So this is a good one. We already have a system where, as you notice, as soon as we added a blog post, it already added it here, right? To our list. So that's already baked in for us. So link to your first post with an anchor tag in source pages blog .astro. So source pages blog index, our blog index is here. So this is our blog index page in our blog pages. Let me close the content here and source contents where the markdown files lives and source pages blog is where our blog lives, specifically the index. And this is where we have that collection. So you can see it's using posts as a variable and that's getting a collection of the blog posts and sorting them. So it has some JavaScript written type here for us, doing that for us already. And that's how it was able to pull in the, the lists that we saw before. So that those lists of blog posts. So what it wants us to do here is we go back to content blog, we go down, you can see here it has a, it's talking, it's saying, all right, basis, the title, the site title, and then an unordered list in terms of how it's including into the section, the different posts how we want it formatted, the slug that it's supposed to use. So this is all set up in a way for the template, which is great, but you can also change the, change that here. You can add more lines of properties if you want, or restructure that however you see fit. So what do we have here? Add these links to a new page. Yep, that's one way we can do that. We already have them being added to our blog and we'll, we'll change that. We might change that a little bit later. Check your browser preview, make sure that all your links post what you are working and lead into your pages. So again, like I said, this is the page, this is the code for that page. This one right here, index.astro, but it's under the, the blog. And this is showing us exactly how it's pulling in that data, how it's structuring it. It's just JavaScript code, some values here and some variables that it's putting in some functions, how it's formatting the, formatting the data, things like that. All right. The section here, I believe this is what gives you that post map. So this is like another kind of component of how that works. So yeah, there's more documentation on this. I don't want to get too into the weeds there because we have a setup already. So you can just create your markdown files right in the content section on your blog and you'll have this structure and you can always come back and change it, right? You can test it in the dev environment before even rolling it out live to your Netlify app, which is great because usually sites, you know, like hosting sites like SiteGround or Hostinger or all these, all these different ones, they all charge you to have a staging site or staging environment, you know, development environment before you actually go live, if you wanted to make those changes and just preview them. So right here, we have it for free essentially, and we can still make those changes however we want, which is pretty standard when you're, when you're hosting or developing your own framework, it's not really just dedicated or unique to Astro, but that's the, one of the advantages of doing it yourself and kind of being more manual with how you set up your website or your blog posts or things like that. Check your browser preview, which is good. I can go ahead and actually. So we created fourth blog post post. I'll hit commit and sync. So now we should get those changes and I can close my dev environment. We should see those changes on our actual site soon. When we go back, so content and markdown files converted to HTML checklist. I can create a new folder, which we did or had, I can create a new markdown blog post. We did. I understand that markdown is another language like Astro produce HTML in my browser. Yes. Adding dynamic content about you. So we have some of this already. The dynamic content I was talking about was like the site title and the site description using variables, like I mentioned before. And it looks like they're looking or talking, going to be talking about it in the about page. Yeah, see page title, 
page title. So we don't have to go through this since we have that and we can, if we have any, if we need to deep dive on different things here, if people have questions, we can always do that. Writing JavaScript expressions in Astro. So add the following JavaScript to your front matter um, between the code fences. You can customize the code for yourself. So this is what in the source page about. So the front matter, when I, when it says that, if we go back to, let's go to our about page is what you see at the top under these dashes. So when it says add, it says you can add to your, your front matter. That's what it is between the fences, the code fences at the top. So if we wanted to do something like this, like utilize what they have here, you can add those different properties here. And I'm not going to do that here. This is just more about us. It's more like constant skills It's just adding skills and then what it does is that it allows you to use that or call those things into the specific content of the page. And we'll get more into that when we actually start developing content. So I don't want to go too far on this. Conditionally render elements. Yeah. So we're not going to jump into there yet. We have our basics, our basic settings now in terms of the site, adding dynamic content using variables. That's just going to develop more styling and different features for the site I'm using JavaScript. I don't want to get too much into that. Just for the nature of this video and we can come back to it as we go along. But so far, I think this, this tutorial is good, but we're going to continue on going with this and develop content for the site. Since we have some basic pages here in terms of our homepage, we have our homepage, we have our blog, we have about us, we do a contact page. Maybe that's one of the new pages we'll create in terms of building that out from scratch and kind of continuing the tutorial there. So like I said, in the next one, we are going to be looking at once the blog is created, we're going to be looking at building out content for the blog. So we're going to be focused on even topic research, building out category structure, generating article ideas, spelling properly. There we go. Article ideas and creating a site map right for our site and more allowing it to get indexed, how to actually get this site indexed on Google, things like that, since we have the blog created. But first we got to fill it up with some content and make sure it makes sense. Everything's working. So if you like more, please watch some of my other videos about tech and marketing. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and hopefully I can get back to you as soon as possible. Stay tuned for the next one.